Welcome to Honest Faith Conversations. Uh, my name is Miguel Covarrubias, and uh, I am a former youth minister. I am. Uh, I, I went to uh, undergrad for uh, youth ministry, and I have my emphasis in, in biblical studies. So I, I know a thing or two about faith, but uh, I am still kind of on this road of journeying to kind of rediscover who I am and uh, how I come about faith. And uh, so I start, I decided to start a uh, podcast uh, that I'm doing with my wife uh, to kind of uh, explore, uh, you know, kind of my place in uh, faith and uh, in the larger world of things. And uh, I will let her introduce herself. Hello, uh, I am Kathy Covarubias. And as he said, I am Miguel's wife. Um, I have uh, multiple family members who have worked for different churches, spanning three generations. So I kind of grew up immersed in faith and uh, the church culture. Uh, I, too, am kind of um, going on my own spiritual journey along with Miguel currently. So I thought I would join him in discovering... um, what faith kind of means to us. Oh, and I'm also making Christmas gifts. So if you hear scissors in the background, that's what that is. I am sorry, but I'm running a little late. So I got to do what I got (laughs) to (laughs) do. All right. So uh, this introduction one, I figured that uh, we should uh, talk about faith and the definition of what faith actually is. So, um, to begin with, I like to use uh, one of my favorite quotes from uh, Frederick Buechner, uh, which says, Faith is homesickness. Faith is a lump in the throat. Faith is less a position on than a movement toward. Less a sure thing than a hunch. Faith is waiting. So, what do you think about that? Well, let's just jump right in there. I wasn't prepared for that. Um... Well, I absolutely agree with what he said, Um, and I like how this quote doesn't necessarily only have to do with faith as we think of it in, like, a church way. Like, we can also think of faith as, um, like, a faith in science, for example. Like, if you have faith in science, this quote also fits in there. I agree, Uh, but uh, there is... There is still something about this that that uh, kind of rubs me the wrong way, and I think it's I think it's primarily because of the way I was brought up. I was brought up in a very um, conservative, very uh, um, the Bible is literal kind of faith community, and so this is uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later on. But uh, um, I do really enjoy this quote. I really love this because I think this is sort of my new definition of what faith means. Um, uh, the second thing is uh, that I have here is uh, kind of the uh, broad definition uh, of faith, which is kind of the, uh, the, the taken definition, which is from uh, the, the dictionary, obviously. Is, it says, complete trust or confidence in something or someone. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that's kind of what I would go with. Uh, then we have uh, one of the... Uh, the Bible verse uh, from the uh, writer of Hebrews. Uh, this is common, most commonly used within the uh, Christian church, which is faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, uh, like I said, I am, uh, I have my undergrad with uh, emphasis in biblical studies. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty big Bible nerd uh, when it comes to some of these things. I can and, attest to that. <laughs> Uh, when, when actually, when I was in high school, I think my mom got me a bracelet that had this verse on it, uh, and uh, I wore it was one of those metal bracelets that you kind of wore around. Oh it. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it like with the chain, and it had like that plate on it. No, 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 it? no, no? it didn't have a plate. It was like like straight up metal that you kind of. Like, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, a solid piece of metal is what I meant. Yep. Yep. 
So um, I, I want to explore each of those things uh, within uh, our, our broadcast uh, today. So uh, I want to stick with the, the Beekner quote to begin with, uh, that faith is homesickness. Um, I really, I really like this uh, because mm-hmm. uh, it's. I think it really defines what I think faith is now. It is should be um, is that faith. Faith is the homesickness for a place that you've never been. Mm-hmm. Um, now, uh, to all of our listeners who have, if you have never met me, uh, you, you don't know yet. But uh, here, here's the uh, big secret. I am a huge nerd. What? No way! <laughs> I have, I am, I belong to all kinds of fandoms and like across the boards. If it's, if it's sci-fi, if it's nerdy, chances are that I've probably encountered it and I probably enjoy it. Uh, so, uh, there was a few years ago that uh, I was on a mission trip with uh, with teenagers, uh, and uh, we were talking about. My uh, my thing was faith for the week, and so we were talking about faith, and I, I brought this up, and I brought on I brought up the fact that uh, this idea that I have that ho- being homesick for a place that you've never been that it, it equates to fandoms, mm-hmm. like um, for instance, um, you know you're probably homesick for a galaxy far far away. <laughs> uh, for a long time ago, when uh, you know the whole uh, uh, Jedi Order ruled over the uh, the people of an entire galaxy, uh, you know, for me, that's that's one of my things. Is that yes, I, I am I am kind of homesick for that, and there's there's reasons for that, and I think we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, I'll let my wife talk about this because I think one of her <laughs> fandoms is uh, is a place that she's homesick for, and uh, I, I want to talk talk to you about that uh-huh. so, um what what is a place that you are homesick for well um if you don't know me or uh if you do i mean if you do know me um you probably are surprised by this but i love harry potter i love the harry potter universe um i think why i like it so much and why i feel a little bit homesick for it even though I know it's a fictional place. I know I can never go there. You know, it's not like I can just buy a ticket and then here I go off to Hogwarts on the on the train to school, you know. Um, I think why I'm so drawn to it is the fan base itself. Like, we, um, anytime you tell somebody that you're a Potterhead and they too are a Potterhead, like, you have an instant connection. Like, you have, like, this... You're like, oh yeah, I too spent my entire childhood, you know, reading these books. And that's kind of why I love it. And there's so many different communities out there. Like NerdCon is a huge big thing in the, in the, um, for Potter nerds. And so is, um, there's actually another podcast, um, about reading the books in terms of scripture that I've been uh, listening to, and I really like that, and there's been a community forming around that. So I think that's probably my main reason why I'm drawn to it is because the community is so large and so welcoming of so many different people. Uh, Would you say that there are ideals espoused by the majority of the characters that kind of make that world a place that uh, you want to be a part of? Oh, absolutely. Um, the fact that they are so, really, they're so inclusive. I mean, I'm talking about, of course, like the main heroes of the story, obviously. You know, Voldemort is not very inclusive. But um, the the main characters are friends with so many different types of ca- uh, creatures and different um, people of different backgrounds. There's people, you know, like Hermione Granger, who's muggle-born. There's people who... Um, have um, a witch for a mother, but a muggle for a father. Um, there's also uh, people like uh, Hagrid, who are half giant, for goodness sake. Like, he's not even fully human, and yet here he is being welcomed into this community. And I think that th- that's one of the things I love about the Potterverse. All right. I think uh, for me, 
my biggest fandom uh, out of all of them. I, like I said, I'm a huge nerd and everything. It, I am a part of many, many fandoms, and I think the biggest one for me is uh, Star Trek, especially uh, the Next Generation. I know a lot of you will say the original series was better, but you know, <laughs> uh, for me, Next Generation is where it was at. I, that's what I grew up with. That's you know, I remember times sitting there with my family and watching uh, uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation, and that uh, these were. These, you know, this was family to me. This was, you know, mm-hmm. kind of these things. And these ideas that that a lot of these characters espoused in, in the Star Trek universe, that it seemed like, for humanity at least, that there was, there was finally a utopia, a utopic society where um, everybody got along finally, where all humanity realized that a lot of our squabbles were just petty. Yep. That we, we put those things aside. And granted... In the Star Trek universe, there are several wars that have not yet happened that over over differing ideals that uh, um, really kind of uh, uh, help to uh, grow up humanity, as it were, help to uh, mature humanity quite quickly. Yep, con like, anybody? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the eugenic wars in specific. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, see, I know my stuff. I just don't focus on Harry Potter. <laughs> And so that's that's something that's something that I'm homesick for. In fact, uh, I was talking with somebody recently about uh, if I were able to do anything, anything in all of my imagination, uh, you know, what would I do? And uh, my my primary thing was, well, the problem with that is that I cannot go and work on the Starship Enterprise because it does not exist. <laughs> yet. It is yet. Yet. Um, <laughs> And, uh, in fact, I, I still like the, the name Zephram, and uh, our son got lucky that he was not named Zephram. He was so close, though. Yeah. Like, it was in the running, definitely. We had uh, we had people who had warned me that I, I better not name our son that, but <laughs> um, that's really, I think, what, uh, what draws us to a lot of these worlds, a lot of these uh, fandoms, is the ideals and the, the surroundings of... Uh, of these characters that uh, that really make them human in a sense and also ethereal in another sense mm-hmm. is uh, I don't know, I think that uh, that ultimately is what faith is. You're homesick for this ideal, as he said um, in the quote here that uh, it's a movement towards less a sure thing than a hunch, and that faith is waiting. Um, it's waiting on things, waiting on the world to change, as John Mayer put it. <laughs> Um, so, um, in a sense, I think that we, we bring things back from, back to our reality from these realities. And I like to prefer to yep. uh, say it in that way, because there's a little bit of me that, 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 uh, on some level wishes that there are in a parallel universe that, uh, you know, these things have actually taken place, that they're actually out there somewhere, Oh yeah, uh, within the, the many multitudes of universes, uh, universi, universes, Univer- universes, universes, eh? maybe. Yeah. I <laughs> well, uh, that that goes along with like any fandom, like hmm? any uh, look at the Lord of the Rings and like the big fan base that they have. You yeah. know, like how many people wish that they were an elf? You know. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have a few friends that uh, have taken classes to speak Elvish. <laughs> so, um, in the bringing of things back to our reality from these realities, um, I, w- I want to talk about uh, the scripture verse. Which, <laughs> um, well, there, there you go. You have some people who don't believe that some of these things that actually took place within the Bible that it's not one hundred percent literal, which is okay. Uh, but um, let's, I want to talk about uh, the substance of things hoped for. That I think that uh, within that, when you're you're faithful huh, to a uh, to a fandom, that uh, that you hoped for these things, that you yep. hope that these things have actually taken place, or that uh, in some level that they're in there, there are others like you that have, that hope for these things, that mm-hmm. you you want these ideals, or you want these uh, things in the real world. Yeah, for example, um, like I was saying with the Harry Potter fandom, like, in the books, most of the characters are so welcoming of different 
people and different backgrounds. I know that a lot of people who have immersed themselves into the Harry Potter books feel that way as well. And we really feel as though, no, we really wish that that were true in our reality too. We really wish that people were more inclusive. We really do wish that people were more understanding of people's differences and celebrate them and not shun them for it. All right. Well, you kind of answered the question here, but um, the question is, what do you wish existed (laughs) in our reality from other realities? Oh, yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's one, obviously. I mean, Mm -hmm. and that's a goal that is probably the most obtainable because I can't be like, hey, I wish everybody had a magical wand and, you know, we could, like, you know, use the, use our magic to clean the house so that we didn't have to. Like, of course, (laughs) like, of course everybody wants that, but um, I would have to say if I had to pick something that was more obtainable it would be it would be that all right uh for me i think for instance with the uh, star trek universe and this is uh uh definitely uh the on the reason why we're doing the podcast is is talking about these things the things that we would bring back to our reality from these other realities Mm -hmm. And and so we'll we'll talk more about a lot of these later on because uh, this is going to be the ongoing podcast series. Uh, that's why it's called Honest Faith Conversations. Is is kind of talking about those things that we would honestly want to bring back to our reality from other realities, the substance of things hoped for. Um, uh, but within the Star Trek universe, I would want to I would want to bring back bring the idea that uh, we've done away with. Money. We've done away with uh, money, and we've mm-hmm. done away with uh, you know um, hating on other people. And it's it, Star Trek has always been a very inclusive program. Um, oh yeah, like even back in the day, like they they were almost um, they had to censor people after them for the things that they would do, and like heaven forbid they had somebody on their cast who happened to be a black female, you know, and she actually had, you know, and kissing a white male. Yes, yeah. exactly. And they actually, I mean, she had real dialogue. Like she was obviously smart. You know, how, how dare they do that? <laughs> <laughs> My, how media has changed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, not really, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are a lot of things from the Star Trek, you know, that we can do an entire episode on, on what I would bring back from the Star Trek universe uh, into our reality. Um, but that brings us to our next question. Uh, how do you work towards those things in your everyday life? Well, that's easy. You know, like I, for me, being inclusive with everybody, like I do honestly try to do so. You know, like... Um, in my personal life and in my work life, I, when I meet somebody new, I try not to have any, like, uh, what are the, what are they called? Preconceived ideas? Yes, yes. I, I would like to not have any preconceived ideas about what this person may be based on the little information that I have, which usually is just their appearance, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so... I mean, I'm not perfect at it. Nobody is. Everybody has the little moments where they think like, oh, like, here comes trouble. But then, like, you like, I I catch myself and I'm like, wait a second. Like, hold up. (laughs) Let's walk back. (laughs) Let's think about this again. So, um, I mean, it's something I'm constantly working towards. But um, I like to think that by me working on it, I'm at least trying to make the world a better place. Yeah, and I would agree, and I think that uh, each of these things that uh, that we gather in our fandoms, they kind of drive us to want to be better, to want to do better with uh, people and uh, things around us. And I think that's that's ultimately, that brings it back to the Frederick Buechner quote, mm-hmm. that that's the reason why it's a movement towards and less a sure thing than a hunch, that faith is waiting, but also doing it's 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 putting it into action being those characters and being those those bits of the characters that we love yeah in the real world um, 
if it's actually reality. But you know, it's a whole <laughs> different conversation for another day. Um, and, and so, um, I, I, I do want to move on to uh, to the uh, third thing about what is faith the uh, the dictionary <laughs> definition, which I. Ultimately, I'm I'm calling this this uh, segment of our broadcast the controversial issues. Uh, each of these each of these things will have something that I'm sure is going to be rather controversial uh, because of you know people are the way they are. Everybody yep. has opinions. <laughs> um, but uh, but this one I'm, I want to go to the dictionary definition and the reason why I don't I don't really like it um, that the Dictionary definition of faith is complete trust or confidence in something or, or someone. And the problem with that is that I, I really don't believe that. I really don't believe that that's what faith is. I don't think mm-hmm. that faith is complete confidence in something or someone. And I, I don't – the reason being is that I think that we should be in a constant conversation with whatever it is yeah. that uh, you know we have faith in. That um, that this definition of faith kind of puts it in a way that uh, you're not you you just automatically believe whatever it is mm-hmm. and whatever they say and that uh, that when faith is more a relationship with something that you're kind of going to be constantly in conversation with it you're constantly yep. going to be questioning why it wants to do something the way that it does and I mean that's that's how it is with marriage mm-hmm. is that you know there's that. If I were if I were to take everything that you say on blind faith, then what are you talking about? <laughs> that uh, I don't think that that would make for a very good marriage. Um, it would be more a, a very one sided relationship. Yeah, and I think that I, I don't I don't I don't know I don't think that that's the way that faith is meant to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think what uh, Webster was trying to do with this um, <laughs> quote. Was, I mean, faith is very complex. Everybody has different ideas of what faith is and what faith means to them. And so this was his best attempt to try to simplify it and kind of dumb it down. Which, why I think it gives such a bad definition is because that happens a lot when you try to simplify something so complex. It doesn't always work. Like some things you just can't simplify. Well, and the second definition that is given for the dictionary is uh, the a, a religious proclivity, and uh, I didn't I didn't write this one down. I didn't uh, print this one off, but um, it's it seems like it's a that's what most religions kind of want you to do mm-hmm. is to be completely letting go into their faith or their their. Um, their idea of what faith is, their yeah. their morality system, and I, I don't think that that's that's what faith is. I no. think that you should constantly be, you know, questioning whatever it is. Yeah, I feel like what you're talking about is more um, blind trust. Yeah, which is different. Yeah, than faith. Exactly. That it's a it's a checking your brains at the door, which yeah. I think that would that's a more definition of a cult than a than a religion. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> than a faith, yeah. I would say I would argue that faith is the religion. That the faith that, as as Frederick Buechner put it, and as um, as Hebrew the writer of Hebrews put it, uh, she was brilliant. Whoever she was. Um, Shh, don't don't try to don't <laughs> angry people now. Miguel. Hey, remember this is, the, uh, <laughs> this is the controversial issues sec- segment. So you know I can say controversial things. Uh, but um, whoever she is, uh, that, you know, the uh, substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, that it's an idea. It's an idea. And that's that's mm-hmm. exactly what most religions are, is they're, they're a morality system. They're they're an idea that was set forward by somebody or, or something somewhere that they kind of pulled out this conversation of, well, this is the way that we should treat the world around us. This is the way we should treat um people yeah and uh ultimately i think that 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 is what becomes the fandom in a sense Mm -hmm. that we are we are in this conversation with uh divine being which granted there's a lot of people who don't believe that you know this divine being exists 
that our particular divine being doesn't yes, exist yes. or somebody else's divine being doesn't exist. Beings sometimes. Yeah. Well, that's that's my point is that I think that and this is this can be brought to another one of my fandoms is and this will be uh, I'm sure another podcast for another day, but uh, <laughs> this is uh, the C.S. Lewis with Car- Chronicles, Chronicles of Narnia. Chronic what calls of Narnia? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the uh, that the uh, the final battle, and uh, there is this moment in the final battle where Aslan is uh, is having conversation with um, the the young boy, and I can't remember what his name, what the character's name is. And uh, he worshipped, he worshipped Tash, which was, in a sense, uh, the um, Islamic faith within the Narnia universe. Um, and Aslan says to him that, "No, you've been worshipping me. You just called me by a different name." That that C.S. Lewis brought forward this idea of anonymous Christianity in his Narnia books, which. Granted, with the the people that he met with, and I absolutely adore the Inklings. I mean, okay, no. We have a story about him, like, going to the uh, Eagle and Child. Eagle yes. and Child. But we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> he may or may not have stole something. <laughs> I offered to buy it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but... Uh, you know, C.S. Lewis brought forward this idea of anonymous Christianity. And for me, that's, I think that I can't say that any one religion is less than my own, except for maybe Scientology. But again, that's another podcast for another day. And it's arguable if it's a religion or not. But... Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Maybe a cult. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> controversial issues segment of uh, the show. <laughs> um, that... Ultimately, I can't say that they're they're more right or more or less right than I am. Mm-hmm. That I think that maybe, maybe just maybe that all of uh, all of these world religions kind of take away something from the same ultimate being that we all just call God by a different name. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that a lot of the stories, uh, and I, I've gone on several mission trips, which I'll have to define what mission trips are. <laughs> And, and some other time, but uh, that uh, I've been on several mission trips to uh, the Navajo, Navajo land to um, uh, talking with def- different people within uh, the Navajo culture. And uh, we, we've talked about the great spirit quite a bit and about how a lot of their stories before they even had interactions with with white people, with Western culture, that uh, they had this idea of a great spirit. And a lot of their stories were the same as the stories from other cultures. That I think that ultimately, that's why we have so many of these stories because they 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 define they define what this ultimate morality should look like. Mm-hmm. That uh, each of these fandoms, some of them even have religions within them. Yep. That uh, that they they pull out this this morality that you know we think that yeah that's that's probably a good way to treat somebody else. We know within the very fiber of our being that uh, you know that that is the proper way to treat somebody else. Mm-hmm. And I, ultimately, I think that's what that's what faith is. It's the uh, it's the movement towards that that idea. Yeah. What do you think? No, and and I agree. And I was, I know, maybe I may be getting a little bit off topic, kind of. Okay. But um, I, I just realized that, the, well, there has been a decline in um, young adults, particularly millennials, not going to church. Mm-hmm. But I can argue that millennials, like no other generation, have like die-hard fandoms. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if maybe we are replacing our love of movies and our love of books. Like, if we're replacing... Using those as a substitute for? Yeah, as a substitute for going to church. Because so many of us see the corruption in the church and we just can't take it anymore. Whereas these fandoms are a little bit more pure to us because they're... They're not filled with corruption, and they're not filled with, you know, 
like real bad behaving people. I mean, th- there are some bad behaving people, but they're not real. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> and they're usually dealt with. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that's that brings up an interesting question. I mean, that brings up the idea that um, millennials are, in a sense, then more religious and more mm-hmm. morally grounded. More faithful. And more faith. Uh, hey, yeah. there we go. Uh, more faithful than than previous generations, which, huh? That's an interesting question. Sorry to drop that bomb on you. <laughs> well, no, that's that, that's an interesting. That's you know, we're, I never ended the uh, controversial issues segment, so I guess this can be a controversial <laughs> issue. Uh, but um, yeah, that's an interesting thing to think about, though. You know, I would kind of argue that uh, you know there there is there is the this next generation which is taking things a little too far in some yeah. of my opinions for for some things, but uh, uh, that's that's a different story for a different day. I, I don't know what we're calling them—the digital generation, the uh, generation after the millennials. Um, I don't know. I'll the have mi- to look. That I know up. millennials like that name hasn't been around for too long, so I'm guessing that this name probably hasn't appeared yet. But no, I think that it's. I think it's uh, the digital generation. I think that's what it was. Generation Y was uh, the uh, was the beginning of the millennials. Is uh, and so um, I think that uh, yeah, the millennials are defined from 1980s through 2000s, uh, early 2000s, loosely. Because it's a, that's a big gap, but uh, most of them have the same kind of general experience as, as mm-hmm. each other um, with the advent of the internet. Whereas this next generation, these teenagers now have been around, they've been, they were they've born into the, the internet. internet culture. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, which is why I think they're called the digital generation. Is gotcha. Because, you know, their, their lives are being, you know. Hey, well, if nobody's coined it yet, well, there you we heard go. it first here. Uh, I think somebody's coined it. So, okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I want to wrap up the, this conversation about faith with um, this question. Mm-hmm. Has this changed any opinions? Like our conversation just now? Yeah. Pause. Cricket, cricket. <laughs> I don't, I mean, it hasn't necessarily changed my opinion on anything. All right. I hate to say that, but I mean, I was basically, you know, just talking to you about stuff that I've already talked with you about. So it's, you yeah. know, my, <laughs> so, True. so I haven't really, you know, had this conversation hasn't necessarily changed my opinion on things, but I hope it's changed um, the viewer's opinion, maybe. Well, one thing that I took away from this conversation, I would say, is definitely the, what I'll have to look into is this mm-hmm. this idea that millennial the millennial generation is more faithful than uh, previous generations, which I think I think we kind of do build upon um, each other that we do stand upon each other's shoulders that we mm-hmm. that we we don't necessarily do away with the faith of our, of our previous generations, but we, that we kind of view it in different ways. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't say more faithful per se, but more, a, uh, um, enthusiastic about, well, more taking it to heart is, uh, is building upon what our parents taught us. Um, since we're both millennials, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's something that I'm going to take away from this conversation. Something that I want to I want to look for look more into um, for myself. Um, so, uh, since this is our introduction episode, I wanted to take a few minutes to kind of talk about uh, our channel, and uh, we did talk about it a little bit throughout our conversation um, and what we are going to be uh, doing here. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have haven't checked out uh, Honest Faith, uh, my uh, my website, I also have a uh, Facebook page for it. Um, on uh, Facebook, it is uh, facebook.com slash Real Honest Faith. Um, I'm also on Twitter at that handle of Real Honest Faith. Um, you can also check out my blog, which is the website for Honest Faith, which I'm going to eventually get its own domain name, but right now it's still hosted under a uh, WordPress blog. Uh, but it's uh, Mig Ben 
cove.wordpress.com. So that's M I G B E N C O V dot wordpress.com. Uh, you can go there and check out my blog as well as a couple of the other honest faith uh, creative uh, ideas that I'm working on uh, at this time. Um, there is also the Honest Faith Interviews, uh, which is, uh, if you go to the website, you can actually get the link to the uh, YouTube uh, channel for that, and you can check those out. Uh, probably going to be taking a break from the interviews for a while until I get some more interviews. Uh, I was trying to get a few more, but uh, people have busy schedules, and especially during the holidays, it's it's kind of hard to get people nailed down to be able to sit down with me to talk for about half an hour. Yep. Um. Let's see. Um, we would also in- invite you to be a part of uh, the conversation here uh, by um, writing to us at honestfaithconvos at gmail.com. That is H O N E S T F A I T H C O N V O S at gmail.com. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, <laughs> it was really long. <laughs> it is really long, but, you know, um, I was trying to figure out a way of uh, making it simple for people to mm-hmm. find. Um, but, uh, you know, find us there and send us an email if you'd like to join this conversation. And, and we'll bring probably bring that up uh, later on, uh, uh, what people have uh, responded to us, yeah. uh, especially about faith or anything else that we have coming up on our podcast um with this we are actually going to be recording two episodes today so this is the introductory episode the next episode uh which is going to be uh here in a little bit so you can probably download this one as well Mm -hmm. afterwards uh but uh, next time on honest faith conversations we are going to be talking about next time on honest faith conversations (laughs) next time (laughs) on honest faith conversations (laughs) We are going to be talking about Faith in the Walking Dead. Uh, So we're going to be talking about the uh, Season 7 thus far, which is we're at the midway point. Uh, We have watched the uh, season finale. uh, Mid-season finale. Mid-season finale uh, this last week. And uh, I really wanted to talk about um, the evolution of the characters and their faith, their morality systems in, uh, in uh, in this season thus far. Because... Um, one of my favorite characters who I, who I loved to hate is becoming <laughs> one of the characters that I think is going to be one that I love, that uh, is really becoming somebody that uh, I, I want to I want to have a conversation with, that I want to have a beer with, that, which is you know something that I, that I think is my one of my things <laughs> for fandom is, is my faith is I want to have conversations with them to be able to bring them into uh, the real world as, as it were. As we just talked about. So um, we're, we'll be talking about that on our next episode. Uh, all right. So thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. And we will be here soon. I don't know. How do we end this thing? We don't have a catchphrase. <laughs> How about join the conversation? Yes, that works? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> so join the conversation.